Okay, today we're going to talk about this insecticidal soap or soapy water solution. We use this for spraying in the garden to deal with aphids and things like that, pests. Um, so I'm going to, it's going to be a long video again and I'm probably going to get quite preachy, so sorry, but I'm going to talk about what you use to make it because it's not as simple as just saying soap. And also we're going to talk about the recipe so that you get what's right for you and your garden. So. Um, shall we go and do that now then? <sighs> it's getting really cold and grey so I'm going to go indoors because I don't want to be outdoors with the camera when this rain kicks off because it's so coming. Right, to the dining table. So the first thing then, why? Right, aphids. I have got a pain in the bum happening just now in the garden with aphids. It's not the first time. This has been happening every year for the last few years. Um, and the first time I spoke about this was way back a few years ago when I got aphids in the greenhouse on my pepper plants. And I did a video then where I used a bog standard chemical bug spray and I tried out one of these soapy sprays to see is one better than the other? Do they both work? Is this whole soapy water spray thing true? And so I took you guys through that. And what I found was that, yup, the soapy water spray does work. It does kill the aphids. But through that, I did learn that you can't just follow all these recipes online because you need to do, as I always say, everything in your garden is about your garden, your plants, your conditions. You can't just assume what works in someone else's garden is going to work for you. So first thing then, what are aphids? Basically, the little buggers are, I've got a few different types in the garden. There's hundreds of different types. And I think there's like, 200 types or so that are actually harmful to the plants, okay? And how that works is they actually bite the plants and they suck out the liquids from inside the plants, okay? And then what happens is that can weaken the plant. Um, it can actually weaken it to the point where it can kill the plant if you get a really big infestation, okay? So going around my garden then, I told you that I had them on the aquilegias and they're all up the stem and there, there's quite a bad um, infestation. And you also get them in the new buds. So when you get the new buds appearing, they're right in there when that opens, they're already in and already causing damage. And you'll be able to spot that because you'll see when those new buds open, those new leaves are all curled up already, even though they're brand new, okay? So if you don't instantly spot aphids, that's a giveaway. So here's how these soapy water sprays work. Basically, aphids and those types of pests, they are soft-bodied insects, okay? And how this works is when it gets onto them and coats them, it actually damages their cell membranes. So basically, the, the little insects start to dry out. They basically, they suffocate and dehydrate, and that's what kills them. We're going to talk about soap next because when we're talking about soapy sprays, I think what's important is we need to recognise the word soap. Now, when this first happened to me, I didn't really know anything, so I just went with an off-the-shelf insecticidal spray, like chemical bug spray thing, and it worked brilliant, got rid of them that day, awesome, dealt with it. But when you're gardening for a while and you start learning about what you're putting out there and the impact it has, you kind of, or some of us at least, may say, well, actually, I don't want to go down that route of spraying loads of chemicals onto, and let's be honest, my garden is mostly food that we eat. So that's when you start looking up these traditional things. So, yeah, so this is how we get back to this then. So that's why we've got the soap remedy for dealing with the aphids. And how it works is that soap is made using a string um, of fatty acids and those actually damage the membranes, the cell membranes on the aphids and other soft-bodied insects. And essentially, because of that damage, those insects lose all their liquid and they dehydrate and they die. That's, that's how it works. Um, but we're talking about how it works and it's these chains of the fatty acids in the soap. What you need to be aware of is these old traditional remedies 
come from a time before we had these factory produced soaps. I don't know if you can hear, but the cats are going mad. Um, wheel of death around the living room. So yeah, so now we've got all these factory produced soaps. What you may be surprised to find out is actually they're not soaps at all. And here's the thing, right? I did another version of this video, but it was incredibly long and preachy, so I'm trying to cut this down. Um, but I'm going to post the bit at the end where I actually read the ingredients from all of these bottles of soap and the fact that none of them say soap on it. But what I'm just going to talk about in this video is specifically washing up liquid or dish soap, a lot of you guys call it, because that's what you guys were actually talking about a lot in the comments. And the thing is, this is not even and never has claimed to be a soap. This is a detergent, okay, which is a whole different thing. Detergents have been created to be super, super, super efficient at breaking down and getting rid of oils and fats and waxes and that kind of thing. Okay, they're super amazing at it, which is why we use them to clean our dishes. But if you think that our plants have a natural coating of a wax or an oil on their leaves to protect them from disease. Now think about, do you want to be spraying a detergent onto that? Okay, so this is why I wanted to talk about this, for you guys to have a real think about what you're putting on there. Okay, and the reason we say soap sprays is because of this stuff. This is the old fashioned soap that was being spoken about. We now call it a pure soap or a simple soap. Um, because it's, it's a very original state. Now, I won't remember the chemicals. I've written it down for you. Hang on. OK, here we go. So I totally will not remember the chemical names of the ingredients in a pure or a simple soap. But essentially, there's not many. It is this. OK, so a proper pure or simple soap, traditional soap, is made using... Do -ba -do -ba -do. It's made by mixing sodium hydroxide or potassium hydroxide with fats or oils. OK, that's it. That's all that's in it. Um, and that then creates something called sodium salt of fatty acid or potassium salt of fatty acid. So those are names to look for if you're looking at labels. OK, um, but what you'll find is that the insecticidal soaps, these ones, OK, you'll see they call them horticultural, gentle liquid soaps, that type of thing. These are formulated to be even more gentle to the plants than just traditional soaps. And they do that because these ones are made only using the potassium and that's a much, much milder soap, OK? So there you go, OK? So these traditional remedies, um, they were a much, much, much milder solution that was used, a much, much milder soap. But also, it wasn't these detergents that are a different thing and do a different job. So that's why the traditional remedies exist from the days when the gardeners had nothing else, OK? Now, you'll notice that I'm never saying natural here. I don't like using the word natural remedy for this because I wouldn't naturally find a soapy water spray growing on a tree in my garden. It's traditional and it's way less harmful than a lot of the chemical bug sprays and things, but I wouldn't call it natural, I call it traditional, that's my thing. Um, now the other thing, I've put this at the end to talk about all this stuff, is if you're an organic gardener, be aware, because I also find that none of these soaps, even the ones claiming to be natural, none of them were actually organic, so be aware of that as well. OK, so basically that's the waffle on what is an aphid, how does the soapy spray kill them, and what is soap. So. Spray then, how do you make a soapy spray? Do you know what? It, is this, it doesn't need a video to show you how to do this. It's this simple. This is a one litre spray bottle. This is what I use. You get lots of different sizes. But all you need for one litres of warm water, use warm water to get the soap to mix to start with. For one litre of warm water, um, I use two tablespoons of my gardener's soap, traditional soap, pure soap, you know what I'm talking about here. And that's it. That's all you need. OK, give it a shake and then go out and spray. And what you want to do, OK, is do not spray willy nilly because, like I say, I say traditional and not natural. This stuff is not found naturally in the garden. So if you spray all over the flowers, yes, there is a risk that it, pollinators will pick this up and it's not what they're after. Um, if you spray it, spray spill it don't spill it anywhere if you spray it randomly everywhere you might get some of the other insects that you're not trying to get rid of because there are insects in your garden that are good insects like ladybirds that you want because these guys actually eat the aphids okay so only spray 
onto the aphids. So when you're looking at your plant, you can see where the infestations are. Spray onto those bits of the plant. So on the stem where the aphids are, the buds where the aphids are, top and bottom of the leaves, that kind of thing. Try not to spray it into the flowers and don't just randomly spray it everywhere, okay? Now, I have found this stuff for me has worked in about four days and it works brilliantly, okay? The chemical bug sprays are much faster, but it's that weights and measures. You decide what you want to use in your garden, okay? Now, here's the safety caveat at the end. Your garden, okay, so take responsibility and be careful. Make up a very, very weak solution of your spray first, okay? So whatever recipe you're cho choosing to use, even if you're choosing to go with a dish soap recipe, make up a very, very weak version first and spray it just in a little bit of your garden to test it, test the leaves and leave it for a couple of days just to make sure there's no damage because if you use too strong a solution it can actually burn the leaves and it can actually kill your plant. So very, very weak solution first and test it and you can if you want, you can decide to then make that a bit stronger, test it again until you find what's right for your garden but just don't go in there straight away with just a recipe off the internet first, trust me. Um, and that's the other thing. When you're spraying it, be aware of what time of day and what season it is because you will have seen how on a hot day, midday, your leaves and your plants get really thin and really soft and kind of floppy because they've lost a lot of the liquids because it's going out into the atmosphere because it's hot. I can't remember the word for it. Um, but if you go first thing in the morning or last fling it, I can't speak, last thing at night, you'll find the leaves are much more turgid. Also, if you're doing this last thing at night, there's less chance of all the pollinators being around. Although you will get moths and things at night, but there's less of them. So, yeah. So that is soapy water or insecticidal sprays. It is that easy. Like I say, this didn't need a video to show you how to use it. It's more about being aware of what you're putting in it and what it does. Okay. Now, this is the first video in a... Um, it's probably going to be three videos, I think, um, for all you new gardeners out there and people with pest problems that you've never dealt with before. Today was the soapy sprays. Next week, we're going to talk about neem oil, which is this stuff, okay? Because I mentioned the soft-bodied insects. Well, obviously, this stuff won't get the pests that are not soft-bodied. So things like earwigs. So neem oil we use for the beasties that actually eat your leaves and that kind of thing. And we're going to talk about this next week, okay? So, yeah, that's it. Um, basically... I hope that was useful. If this is the kind of stuff you want to see on this channel, do the usual. Give it a thumbs up so I know you like this kind of content. Hit the subscribe button and remember the wee bell if you want to see more of these videos. If you don't click that bell, YouTube won't actually let you know every time I post a video. You need to click the bell, okay? Um, and that is me for this video. But I will go away now and I will leave you with some of the mad... Um, footage of the original version of this video where I try to read these labels. So this one is a horticultural soap. It's a gentle liquid soap. It says soap and it lists in the ingredients those things that we need. So I'm going to start with this one to tell you about this. So this one has um, potential... Oh, I can't speak. This one in the ingredients is potassium soap of fatty acids. That's it. That's all that's in here. Okay. Now, I'm going to start here. This one is antibacterial hand wash. So for a start, do you want antibacterial agents in the garden when you've done all that effort to cultivate all that bacteria and organisms in the soil and everything? So there's your first thing to think about. But let's see... Ingredients, very focals, bear with me. Hence the funny. So you young people, this is why we read like this, because the bottom's reading. Um, so this contains sodium laureth sulfate, cocamidoprofil, uh, betaine, sodium chloride, citric acid, disodium, parfum, sodium benzoate, styrene, acrylates, copal... Cop copolymer, glycerine, potassium sorbate, polyquaternium, lactic acid, and I'm not even finished down the list yet. 
so you can see the amount of stuff. This also has perfumes in here as well. So if you're trying to go for something that's nice and natural for your garden, think about all those extra things that are in there. And at no point did I read that it has the fatty acids that we need from the soap, okay? So that's the first one. And also, if you're laughing at me trying to read this, uh, remember that I am severely dyslexic. So the fact that I'm doing this with you guys to see is a big deal. So no laughing, right? Okay. Here we go, look at the colour of these guys. The fact that they're these funny colours is probably a big hint that they've got colour and things in them. Right, so this one claims to be all natural. It's 100% natural fragrance and it's vegan. Um, I wasn't intending eating it though, okay? That's the other thing I've noticed, none of these say organic. If you're an organic gardener, you need to be aware of that because you use these and they say natural doesn't mean they're organic. Right, this one has Oh my God, this is a massive list. Um, sodium laureth sulfate. Co oh, it's just tiny, I can't even see it. Co Coca medrophil betaine. Um, mentha arvensis, brackets, peppermint, leaf oil, sodium chloride, uh, lactic acid. Dicetti, sodium benzoate, yeah, so again, all that stuff, at no point does it actually mention soap or any of the fatty acid stuff, but all that list of things on there. This one is the same company, so it'll be similar, different fragrances and colours. Uh, and again, yep, so, uh, do, 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 vegan, doesn't say anywhere organic, uh, and it's Sodium, sulfate, sodium chloride, beauty, but yeah, so it's all the same stuff. So again, right, so I'm going to put these here. This. Loads of people actually specifically named this what you guys call dish soap. Um, and just by, ha I happen to have this in the house. We don't always use this, it's what's here. So apart from the fact that this is concentrated, says washes up to twice as much as Nick's selling brands. So if you're using this, you need to think about the fact that it's concentrated. So you need to dilute the hell out of it if you're using it. But also this, in the UK, we call it washing up liquid, not dish soap. Um, and nowhere on here does it claim to be soap. But what you need to watch with these things is for detergents, because again, detergents are not soaps. So watch out for that stuff. But in here, let's see, have I even got green? Oh, here we go, right. So the first thing, it's got a big warning on it, and it says caution irritant. Uh, big, massive, bold print. Causes serious irritation, harmful to aquatic life with long-lasting effects. So do you want that in your garden? Uh, keep out of reach of children. Big letters, if in eyes, rinse continuously with water for several minutes. So, you know, they're saying, oh my God, don't get this near you. This is really dodgy stuff. Do you want to put that on your plants? Um, yeah, and I'm looking for ingredients and I can't see them. Oh, here we go. Uh, anionic surfactants, you don't want surfactants, and non ionic surfactants and oh my god I can't even read that again we've got the, the very focal reading face on oh I can't, I can't even benzoyo something that's really long and ends in in can't read it phenox ethanol and perfumes again no soap no fatty acids from soap 